Well, it is first morning of elk hunting here in Idaho, and fortunately it kind of warmed up overnight because it was getting very chilly last night, but stayed warm through the night. And we have a bugling bull located that we're heading to. Well, we had him located last night, so we're hoping he's still in the same place. The moon came up for a little bit, but cloud cover came back in, and and they just hunkered down all night and gonna get up and be active this morning. So we're gonna get down and get after them and uh, hopefully get some bugling action and maybe get a call in here.
pretty sure he's probably gonna head up that mountain to go bed, so we'll let him go for a bit. There's another one bugling over here. Sounds like a smaller bull, but we'll go see what he is. We'll come back and find this one once he settles down in his bedding area. These bulls are runners. First one went around, I think he probably went up the hill to bed. This one, every time we'd get within 100 yards, he'd push off another 100. He's a young bull. I haven't heard the big bull bugle for a while, so we might climb up the hill. See if we can find out where he's bedding. Go in and see if we can throw a little party for him. All right, well, we located the two bulls this morning, chased them around in the meadow, but <clears throat> like typical, they were on their way out of the meadow at daylight, so we were behind them each direction. One went that way, one went that way. The thermals seem to be going uphill all morning. Hopefully they hold true, because we drove around the backside of the mountain. I climb up 1,600 feet and then drop down onto about the only timbered bench on the other side where we're hoping the bigger of the two sounding bulls went to bed down. So it'll be a several hour gamble if we choose wrong, but that's the only likely place that they probably went to is up there. They're probably about 1200 feet higher than the meadow. We're going to go up over 1600 and then drop down Hopefully get him bugling from up on top of the ridge.
Well, we have made it to the top of the ridge. And I really hope there's an elk in here because that was a pole. I don't think we quite made the full 1600. I think we stopped at about 1200 and side hilled around to the ridge. But if our guess is correct, the elk are going to be in the timber on the back side here. It's just an absolute. Looks like the moon up here. Burn went through here, super hot. So it's elk go down in the meadows in the bottom at night and rock down there in water. And then they've got to go somewhere where there's cover. So looking at on X, the only bit of timber within probably three miles is right over this hill. So we're putting our eggs in that basket and also hoping that this bull is bigger than the other one. He sounded a lot bigger, but the other one this morning sounded like a wimpy little bull, but he was a pretty good bull. So. We're gonna get up here and see what we've got. not in here. The only place he could have went is farther around the mountain. Which means we have to climb up to the top ridge, circle about two and a half miles around and drop into the next drainage. Let's see if Donnie's okay. We should have went after the other bull. We have covered every single timber patch within probably three miles of the meadow. No sign of the elk, so we may have grossly misjudged them. They might still be laying down in the meadow. But he headed out the south end of the meadow and went around the point of the ridge and we didn't hear him again. So now we've got 2,000 feet in elevation to drop. Maybe not quite that much, 1,800. But we'll go find them. Find him up there. 
don't know where he ended up. Hopefully he'll be back tonight. But we aren't climbing that again. Slow day. Slow <laughs> long day. We uh, got back from Oregon, and as you've watched the last handful of episodes following Jeff Skousen along, yeah. we've been sitting here in Idaho chomping at the bit to uh, get back out. Yes. I, uh, I did get to pack my new bow. Yeah. My new prime black, which at the time wasn't even available. Now it's available and anybody can get one, but it, uh, I was excited to put it to the test and didn't even really get close. To it. This morning, I guess we... We got fairly close, but yeah. every bugle we let out seemed to make them go just a little <laughs> bit farther away from us. I still, I, you know, later in the season, as it gets a little bit later and the season progresses, those elk sometimes get pressured and we weren't hunting a long ways off of a road. So I think they had played the game before and yeah. we, uh, we gave it a try. I mean, we, we got really close. We moved in, they were bugling on their own. We pushed in, I figured we we're within 150 yards. It's going to happen. And pretty quickly knew that these elk were runners. So some went that way, some went that way. Yeah. Yeah. Had good bugles. We only got to see the one, and he was a nice bull. The other one, I think, was a bigger bull, just judging Sounded by the like bugle. Yeah. So we went after him for the day. It was funny because the whole night before, we had driven quite a few roads just looking for elk sign, getting out bugling, trying to locate a bugle. I actually did hear one pretty weak response, so we didn't even go back after him. But then we got these ones bugling uh, after dark. And the next morning, didn't hike too far. It was flat. We were down in the, the river bottom there. And uh, Drew made a comment, something about, man, after tagging along with Mark and Jeff Skousen last week, and then coming out with you guys, I was starting to think you were pretty soft. Yeah. So we... Uh, then we proceeded up 1,500 vertical feet. Straight up, and then continued another 800 after that, I think. And yeah. We ended up doing... 11 miles, 12 miles, 11 or 12 miles, and most of it came afternoon, so it was a, yeah. we, we showed him we weren't all that soft, but. Yeah, we crossed the bull's track almost down where we started. Yeah, yeah, we basically just made a big loop on the mountain trying to find out where that bull went, just hoping to get him to bugle, find a bench that he was on. We covered a ton of country, and honestly, at this point, there's only one place he could have been that we didn't make it into, so. Next year, we're hiking. We'll go back into that one spot <laughs> instead of hiking 11 miles everywhere else. But yeah. We, uh, it was fun, we were on elk, they were bugling. Um, it's just a matter of time, but uh, tomorrow we're gonna take the morning off and uh, pick my daughter up from school. She doesn't have volleyball practice, so. Uh, my 14-year-old daughter, Jessie, has not shot an elk yet, and we're going to spend at least tomorrow and Saturday seeing if we can get her in on a bugling bull and should be fine. make something happen. So She's already reserved. Uh, she wants to hunt off of the Baku bikes, the e-bikes, yep. and she said if she kills an elk, she gets to be the one that gives away the Baku e-bike. Those are like $4,500 bikes. Yes. So. Pretty awesome giveaway coming up. I almost said if, when Jesse fills her tag. Yes. We're going to be confident here and <laughs> think positive. So uh, that means I'll be giving away a prime black when I fill my tag in Idaho. So, yep. Don't you be eyeballing my bow. Uh, I, I see you eyeballing it there. It's not left-handed. We aren't giving away <laughs> this bow. We're giving away a prime black bow. This bow is staying close yeah. by. Uh, we've got some awesome stuff coming up. We're back in Idaho now for the next foreseeable future. Uh, hunt with Jesse for a couple of days, and then I've got all next week. So I've got six days to go out and hopefully hold out for a more mature bull. Quite a few spots that we haven't hit in the past, and one tag's already done for Idaho. So yep. we like got to explore some country that we haven't delved into yet. Yeah. And like I said at the premiere episode when Donnie filled his tag, 
with all these extra days to hunt, now I can hold out for a five point. So exactly. But I might even set my bar a little higher this season and hold yeah. out for a even more mature bull, a more mature five point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, like Donnie said, we've got some areas we've scouted. We've got some areas that we've uh, not been into before that we want to check out, and these are areas that a little bit off the grid, and uh, we're hoping they hold some bigger bulls. So. Not trophy hunt by any means, but targeting a more mature animal. So, yeah. uh, giveaway today, we will give away another uh, Destination Elk package number three, which is the Bugle Tube, the three pack of Diaphragm Elk Calls, Mountain Ops Bugleberry Ignite. By the way, who got to try Bugleberry? Comment below, let us know if you tried it, what you think. It was limited and they sold out incredibly quickly every time they brought in a batch. So yes. we're trying to push them to not make it just a September flavor because it's my favorite flavor. It sold so, out very, very fast. Yeah. <laughs> like before the premiere episode even launched on the day they brought it in. Yeah. So, uh, And then we've got the 18 ounce Rambler from Yeti with the Destination Elk logo. So just comment below, same as every day. Uh, extra chances are available for you at elk101.com forward slash destination elk. The elk truck, we're getting closer to giving That's that away. That's going to be a huge package for somebody to yeah. win a truck. Yeah, we're giving away a truck. So go to elk101.com forward slash truck and check that out. Yep. And if you haven't subscribed to the University of Elk Hunting online course, we would love to see you become a member there. You can just go to elk101.com forward slash online course. And what's the code they use? Put you on the spot. Oh, I'm all coded out. Okay, well, you're thinking of the code. Actually, while I'm talking about the code, you think about a dad joke. Because I don't want any more nasty comments from people saying, no more dad jokes from Donnie. I'm not watching anymore unless we get dad jokes from Donnie. So you think of a dad joke. The code is destination. Go to elk101.com forward slash online course. Use the code destination. You're going to save $20. You're going to get 20 extra entries in the elk truck giveaway. And we're going to, we're going to send you a free shirt, a destination elk V2 shirt. And you get one free if you sign up during the month of November. So you got a dad joke for us? Uh, oh, wait, <laughs> I looked that up and you can't, there's no definition. It's not a real word. Ugh. What? Arg? Ugh. Ugh? I can't express how that makes me feel. <laughs> Took like four seconds for John to get it. John's pretty quick. I'm guessing most of our viewers <laughs> probably are still sitting there going, what's he talking about? Hey, uh, uh, you get it, you get it. Arg. Yeah, that's a pirate. <laughs> that's our, I, I matey. <gasps> All right, well, sit-down comedy is on par. On par. <laughs> we don't even get to stand up for it. <laughs> John's back there saying, cut, cut this now. Yeah. Get out of it. Find a way out. Escape. Exit. He's out of film. Memory card's full. <laughs> well, I think his appetite for dad jokes is full. All right, you know the routine. Comment below. Subscribe to the Elk 101 YouTube channel. Like the video. Help us out in that way. Uh, we will be back tomorrow night and we'll be hunting with my daughter, Jesse, with Jesse, who shoots pink arrows. I've never elk hunted with someone who shoots pink arrows on the Baku e-bikes. Yeah. Let's see you tomorrow. See ya.